Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about project migration we on Azure DevOps. Uh, this year we've had a couple situations where we had to start the project on a temporary organization and then migrate it to the client organization. This might happen if your your client is uh, sorting out like everything to create their own organization. Um, so I've done this a couple of times this year and I've had people asking uh, what tools and how I did it. So I figure I would create a video about it. So here we go. A couple things. Um, we are gonna, in this example, um, I'm gonna be migrating Git repositories. Uh, pipelines will be YAML. And then we're going to migrate the work items, which is really the real the real challenge here. Uh, let's start with some considerations and preparations. Uh, make sure that you have access in both organizations, uh, sufficient access to, to do this. Yeah, you're going to have to need access to both organizations on different, on different contexts. Um, Things that are not going to be migrated automatically are things like your dashboards. If you have a nice dashboard, you're going to have to recreate it. Uh, service connections, you have to recreate it. Extensions, um, you will have to reinstall them. So some things like that are still uh, not automatically migrated. Uh, but I think that the core of what you need is going to be there. Um, all right, so let's get to it. So I have this target project is 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 empty, I, and during this demo, uh, you're gonna see that I'm gonna use the target project is on this profile of the browser that has a clear uh, theme, and then the source organization is uh, in this kind of grayish, bluish kind of tone. So hopefully that helps you understand where I am. So let's do the first thing, which is migrating the repo. It's super easy, really. Um, you're going to go here and say import repository. And in here is going to ask you from a clone URL. This is in my target project. So let's go to the source project, go to repos. Uh, I'll go to to um, to the branches here and go and say main. And here I would say clone, and it's gonna give me this link. I'm gonna copy this and paste it on the clone URL. It it understand what the names it is, so you can leave it like that. Um, so I'm going to say requires authentication. So this is a username and pad. The easiest way to get that is come here and say J credentials and just copy them. So um, Arcovo is easy to remember. I'll copy the, the password or the pad. I'm going to go to my other one and say Arcovo, copy that and say import. And that's it. Uh, not now, please. Um, this is going to take just a little bit, but that's all you need to know. And it's already there. So if I go now to repos here, I can see it here and all the code. And OK, let's move to the next step. Super easy because I already have the pipeline here. So I'm going to go to pipelines. And there's no pipeline. I'm going to create a new one, uh, git. And this is the repo. And it gives me a bunch of options. Just go to the very end and say existing Azure YAML pipeline. And you just select the one that you want. And that's it. There is some things here that you need to to double check. So if you have a self-hosted agent pool, you, 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 do, you will have to recreate it and then um, update it here. But other than that, 
uh, you're done. Save and you're done. Okay, so now we're gonna get to the interesting thing. We're gonna migrate the user, the work items. So this is gonna include uh, epics, uh, features, user story, tasks, and bugs. Um, this will not include uh, test uh, plans, so we didn't have any, but I think the, the tool that I'm gonna use, I think supports that. So anyway, um, I have created some queries. So um, basically one query I created and it has some charts. So right, right now the query gives me everything, but there's nothing, right? So the charts are empty. Let me show you uh, how it looks on the source project. Uh, I go to queries and go all items and charts. And this is basically the query that I prepared. It's going to tell me the number of the items and uh, how they are um, divided by things like by type and by status and by iteration. So ideally, when I migrate this into the target um, project, the charts are going to look exactly the same. Also, the tool that I use is, is called DevOps Migration and is by this uh, Naked Agility. Um, kudos to them. Thank you to them for putting this out. It has a lot of uh, documentation. and uh, But in our case, um, we're just going to run based on a configuration that I have. So this, this is actually a a command it basically you give it a configuration file and if you want to see all the options that you want what you really want to do is initialize with the template and you just say reference this is going to generate a file that is similar to this one it tells you it's a JSON file. The configuration is a JSON file. It tells you everything that you can do. So what are the endpoints? So this one, for example, would be the source, the target. If you have multiple targets or basically you just have endpoints and then then you go into processors, processor types. This is the, the work item processor that you can, you have others like test plans and bulk editor and stuff like that. Uh, let's look at the one that I'm going to be using. Actually, this is a copy of the one that I'm going to be using where I remove the tokens. So this is going to be my uh, uh, source uh, organization and project. They collect collection. I think this is inherited from the TFS days. Um, and then here is the important thing that you need to be aware in all this process. Um, you are gonna have to add a custom field to your work items. And I'll show you how to do that. But uh, basically what they're gonna do is uh, copy a link to the source work item item into that field. And that helps them in many, many ways, but also uh, it is a good reference for you to know where a user story or, or a work item came from. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I called this one source and this one target, and the target is the target project that I was talking about. And here is the custom uh, ID field. To be fair, you only need it on the target. You don't need it on the source. I could have left that open, uh, um, empty. All right, and then here you say, this is a work item migration processor. You have some, some systems. And then here's a query. Um, so if you need to do things like, uh, if you have more than, I think, uh, 10,000 is the limit that this query can give you. Give you If you have more than X amount of user uh, of work items, you may want to partition this uh, based on this query. Uh, and 
I say source name source, target name target, and that's it. This is what I'm going to be running. Okay, so before I run this, I need to make sure that on my target, I'm going to have this custom reflected work item ID. Remember, the processor is going to look for that and is going to uh, copy into there the source uh, reference URL. So if I go into my target project, so I'm going to need to have access to the organization, go to organization settings, processes. You can see that I've already created something called Ashram Migrated. You can choose your own name. You're not allowed to edit it on the base, so you have to create like an inherited process and then go um, work item by work item and add in this field. So you can see here that I added it here. If you, if you, the first time that you go, you want to go and say, create new field and say here, reflected work item. ID, whatever the name is, it's a text. And then once you add the field, you have the act, you have the option to add the same field in multiple uh, work items. You do have to do it one by one. Like for example, test case doesn't have it because I'm not migrating. If I say new field, I can come here, say use existing field and look for reflected work item ID. And all I need to choose is, well, in which section I'm going to put it. So if you have experience in editing processes, great. If not, it's it's pretty simple. You just go here and say add new field. And if if it already exists, you select it. Just don't 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 think that you have to create it um, more than once is uh, you just you do have to say custom dot and then the field name. You can see here in the option, the reference name is custom dot reflected work item ID. All right, so once you have this, uh, please be aware that changing process um, will impact the, the user, the work items that you have on your project. So if you already have work items, they will be affected. Uh, the way that you change the, the project would be um, go to Agile. Let's say your project is currently under Agile. You go there, you say projects, you select and say change process and change the, the, the process. Um, so once your project has the right process, you can proceed on actually executing the migration. So let's go and have our query kind of ready. Uh, it is empty, there's nothing there. So, all right, so let's execute this migration, DevOps migration. I'm gonna say execute config configuration.json. And off we go. And it started. So while this run, I just want to say a couple things. Uh, make sure that whatever personal access tokens you create for this, you can go and delete them right away. The same with the one that we created for the GitHub migration. So just for the sake of being very, very safe, um, make sure that you do some cleaning after you're done. Um, then this is going to run for a few minutes. I'll come back when it's done. So now it's done. It took about 20 minutes to migrate 270 something um, stories. And uh, it depends on your connectivity, how fast the services are that day. But now I can come into queries and uh, look at my query and the charts and we can see 276 all across 131 11 
So if I compare it to source is, it's kind of the same, 131, 111, 30, uh, 172. Let's just put them side by side here if I can. Uh, I, I cannot, or yeah, maybe I can. So the numbers look pretty similar, 19, 11. So everything seems to be uh, on track for the target project. All right, so let me show you here in the backlogs, if I see the epics, all the, um, all the relationships um, were uh, persisted. And then as I go into one of this, uh, I can see that like all the screenshots and whatnot uh, came true. All right, one, one cool thing about this migration is that it persists the link uh, with Git. So if you go into the history, these are all the, the things that had happened on the, on the source organization. If I go into the change itself, I can go into the details. And you can see here that there were work items related to this PR and all of that carried over. I also want to highlight how the process did create all the iterations that were on the source project, and it would have created areas if I had areas to import. So that's pretty cool too, because all the work items are properly classified. Um, we migrate repositories, pipelines, and work items. Um, and then we check that the work items were migrated com completely. I hope this helped.